Alright guys, welcome back. So in the last video we completed our Pong game and it's looking pretty good right now. Our ball is bouncing around and our scores are increasing. So in this video we'll be converting this desktop game into an Android game. So we'll be working on that. So first of all what I want you guys to do is go to this link of github.com Bhatt, and kiwi pong game. And this will contain this folder of ping pong and you click on it, it will contain the source code of all the files that we have written right now that is main.py and pong.kiwi and it will also contain this text file of kiwi to android which contains all the steps that are required to convert a desktop application into an android application. So an android application is also known as an apk and this is the file extension. File extensions are like .txt, .doc and the file extension of installing an app on our mobile phones, on Android mobile phones is .apk. So this is the file that is required to install an application on your mobile phone. So if you're using Linux or Mac, you can just directly jump to step number four. But if you are using Windows, you need to follow the rest of the steps. So the first step is signing up on DigitalOcean. So why do we need to do that? Because our conversion is only going to work on Linux or Mac. That is why on Windows, we need to have a server, a Linux server to be more precise. So anyways, if you are using Windows, just sign up on DigitalOcean. So what we are going to do is we are just going to copy this link over here and paste this in our browser. And what this will do is it will give you $100 for free so that you can follow along in this video for free. And it will also give you like, uh, you can use this credit for like 60 days. So like even if you are using this server to host your own website or any other like functionality, feel free to do that. But you can follow along in this video for free, but you might have to input your credit card. So, but it's not going to cut any money. So that's fine. So anyways, uh, just sign up with that link and after you have signed up and signed in, you will see a screen like this. So first of all, we need to create a server and DigitalOcean is known as a droplet. So we are going to click on get started with a droplet. It can also be created by clicking on this create button and this just clicking on this droplets. But anyways, we are just going to click on get started with the droplet. And then because we need a Linux server, so we are just going to click on this Ubuntu and then this is going to be standard. And then in the plans, we are just going to choose this $5 per month plan. But uh, don't worry, this like video won't even require like $1. And anyways, you have like $100 for free if you use that sign up link. So this is not going to even make like a dent. So anyways, after that, you can choose a data center region. I'm just gonna let it remain to New York. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. And then authentication, just choose one time password. And then um, we are just gonna change this to something else. Let's call it uh, Ubuntu and then Kiwi convert, maybe Kiwi convert. All right, instead of the C, V. And then you don't need anything else. Just click on create droplet. And, and this one time password will be emailed to you. So after creating this droplet, make sure you check your email. But anyways, I'll just click on create droplet and then it will create a droplet for over here. It will just take a couple of seconds. So after you have created your droplet, it will show an IP address over here. What you need to do is click over here and then click on access console. And let's go back to our Kiwi to Android to see the steps. So first we have to create a droplet. So we are doing that. And then the third step is open up the terminal access control and log in using your one time password. So we are going to do that. Let's go back over here. And uh, what we are going to do is just three click over here and then click on access console. What this will do is it will open up this console over here. Then in the email that you have got, you have the username and the password. The username is usually going to be just root, then press enter and then right click over here. Just copy the password from your email and click on place paste as plain text and then press enter. And then it requires the current Unix password is the same as the password that you put over here. Just press enter again. And then you need to change the current password. So I'm just going to put in my password. Uh, just put in yours. Make sure you remember it. And then you need to retype it. So I'm just going to put in my new password. Press enter. All right. So now we have created our server and it's looking pretty good. Let's go to the next step of what we have to do. First, we have to install Python and virtual environment. So on this new server, there will be no Python. So you need to install Python on our Linux new system. And we also need to install virtual environment. So anything virtual environment is basically a space on our server where we can install anything and do whatever we want. And it's not going to affect rest of our server or rest of our computing space. So if you're using Linux or Mac, it's a good idea. First of all, make sure you have Python installed, obviously Python 3 plus. And then you have to also install virtual environment. You don't need to, but it's like better if you install a virtual environment. And how do you do that? We just go to this link that is given by DigitalOcean. Just copy and uh, you can just paste it on your browser and press enter. 
and then we are just gonna follow you can also read it if you want um, we are just gonna follow the steps so the first step is to upgrade everything and update everything so we are gonna go back to our access control so I'm just gonna copy this from here and paste this inside our shell or our terminal press enter and this will update our uh, server and then we need to do the second step that is upgrade so we are gonna copy and paste this also inside our terminal press enter after the installation is complete we'll go to our third step that is python 3. Point. so this command is basically to find out what kind of python version is on your terminal so i'm just gonna copy and paste this over here too and press enter so we have installed python 3.6.9 which is perfect for our use so make sure this python version is above 3.5 otherwise it might give some kind of problems so after that we need to install pip so pip is basically something that we need to install libraries so so using your terminal, you can install packages. So for example, if you wanted to install Kiwi using pip, you'll probably write pip install Kiwi. So that's why we need that in our server. After that, uh, after pip has installed, we'll just skip this one step and go straight to setting up a virtual environment. You can read what is a virtual environment if you want, but I'm just gonna go to this step and install a virtual environment. So I'm gonna copy and paste this over here in our terminal, press enter. So after that, we are going to do our next step that is mkdir environment. So this will, this command in Linux is used to create a new directory mkdir stands for make directory. So I'm just going to copy and paste this to just be placed as plain text. And now you can press actually ls and see like what kind of directories are here. So if you like ls is a command just to like list directories inside our current position. So right now we have environments and then we need to go inside our environments folder. So in Linux, you basically write cd or it stands for change directory and then you write environment. So you can just press en and then press your tab button. It will automatically complete it for you. So that's a, like a cool shortcut. And now inside this, what we are going to do is we are going to create our virtual environment and virtual environment will be called myenv. So we're just going to copy and paste this uh, over here, paste as plain text, press enter. And now we can just press ls and see like there's a new directory inside our environments folder called myenv. And we are inside environments by this slash and environments you can see over here. And then we can just check what kind of directories and what kind of files are inside myenv by just going inside this my env and pressing the tab button and now we can press ls and it will show us all kind of files uh, we don't have to like really care about these files but just so that you know that these files exist in a virtual environment and now to go back to our environments directory because right now we are inside my env you can write cd and then space dot dot and it will take you to your previous directory that is the environments so now that we have created our virtual environment, we need to activate this virtual environment and you activate this virtual environment on Windows. If you're not using a server or DigitalOcean, then it might be a little bit different, but I think on Linux, Mac and in our virtual environment or our server, it's basically the same. So we are just going to copy and paste this to in our terminal. Let's place this and press enter. And you know, our virtual environment has activated by this my env in brackets before this root at the rate Ubuntu. So whenever these appears in front of our root at the rate Ubuntu, then you know that our virtual environment has been activated. Now we can install anything inside this folder and it won't affect the rest of our server. All right, so our this step is done. So let's go and check what is the next step. So we have installed Python and virtual environment. And now we need to install build dozer. So we need going to go to this link that is hashtag targeting android and i'm just gonna actually you don't need to go to that link what you can also do is i mean you can go if you want it's pretty much the same so this link github.com kiwi bulldozer has also the installation instructions but this one also has the installation instructions because we are following the steps that are written inside this text file so that's why we are going to go to this link so just copy and paste this inside your browser and now what we are going to do is first of all we need to install bulldozer so what we are going to do is we are going to just copy this from here and over here we are going to use the pip that we have already installed on our server and we're going to write pip install and then we're just going to paste this link over here that is upgrade bulldozer and press enter so you can see that we have just copied this line and then we just wrote pip install so on our server if we go it should be installing our uh, bulldozer 
All right, so our build user has been installed, but there are some other instructions over here, Android and Ubuntu 18.04, which we are using. So now we need to install all of this stuff over here. We have already installed this one, Python 3-pip, so we're not gonna install that, but we need to install all of this stuff, that is zip, unzip, OpenGDK, and then the rest of the stuff on the right. So I'm just gonna copy this from here, and this installation is a little bit different. You can see it is apt install, it's not pip install. So it's a little bit different, but it works kind of the same. So we're just gonna copy and paste this over here and press enter. After it has completed installation, we are going to install the rest of the library. So I'm just gonna copy and copy over here and paste this over here. So before that, we're just gonna write, uh, not pip install, we need to write apt install. So I'm, um, first I'm just gonna copy this from here, minus y, and uh, paste this over here, just paste this as plain text. And then I'm just gonna copy the rest of the stuff from here and I'm gonna paste it. Uh, first give a space and then paste it and um, just press enter. So this will install all the necessary libraries that are needed by build dozer. Now we'll just wait for it to complete installation and then we need to install one last thing that is this Cython over here. So we are just gonna copy and paste this um, instead of pip3 install, we can actually do just pip install. So I'm just gonna copy this from here and we're gonna write pip over here, give a space and then paste it as plain text. And this will install Cython. So Cython is basically a C or a C++ wrapper in Python, which basically means you can use C++ and C inside Python. So Kiwi needs it for some reason. So that's why we are gonna install it. So now that we have completed all of these steps, now we need to add uh, this line over here. So we're just gonna copy this from here and paste this and uh, press enter over here. This will add just some kind of path that is needed by Buildozer to create our Android APK. Now we can go back and see the next step that is install FileZilla. You can skip this. This is basically to transfer our files to the server over here that we have created. So right now there is no way to transfer the files, our Pong game or our Kiwi files over here. So that's why we need FileZilla to connect our computer to our server. So this is only needed if you are using Windows, if you are using Linux or Mac, then you can just basically connect to or like just go to your folder that is inside your Linux system by using the CD command. But if you are using Windows, you need to install this FileZilla. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this just to show you guys what you need to install. So after doing this, just download the version that you need. And if you're probably using Windows, if you're watching this part, then just click on download FileZilla client. And after you have uh, downloaded it, the UI will somewhat look like this. Obviously in future versions, it might look a little bit different, but basically the areas will be the same. That is the host, the username, the password, and the port. So when you created our digital ocean droplet, you need to go over here. You need to copy this IP address and go back to your FileZilla. And instead of host, just copy your IP address and the username is going to be root and most probably and then the password which you created in your terminal. If you forgot your password, which might be the case for some people, just uh, destroy this over here and create a new droplet. But I hope you haven't forgotten the password. So just put the new password over here, not the one that you got in Gmail, but the new password that we created when we were opening our server for the first time. And then as port, we are gonna put in 22, and then we are gonna click on quick connect. And then just click on always trust this hold, click on okay. And it's gonna list all the directories inside our server. So you can see there is the environments folder, and then there is the my env folder. So what we are gonna do is inside this um, environments folder, we are just gonna copy and paste our um, Pong game or our Kiwi files. So my Pong game, just, just go to your directory from using this. So these, these are the files that are inside your computer. So just go to the folder which contains your Pong game and just copy and paste this uh, inside your environments folder. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. All right, so it says all files have been successfully transferred. So what you can do now is actually go back to your terminal and type in ls, that is list all the directories. And you can see that our ping pong folder is over here. So if we go inside our ping pong folder, we can see all the files that are here. Obviously we don't need this steps.txt because we just need to convert our main.py and pong.kv file to an Android version. So now we can go to the next step that is um, connect files to server, which we have already done. And now we need to upload our Kiwi folder to environments folder, which we just did. In Linux and Mac, just go to your Kiwi folder using terminal. And then we need to type in this command of bulldozer dot, uh, not dot, just bulldozer in it. That is, it will initialize a bulldozer file. So we're gonna go over here and just paste it as plain text, press enter. 
and then just press Y on your keyboard and press enter. And this says file buildozer.spec has been created. So what you can do is if you want to change the app name and stuff, you can download this uh, file, just click on reload and um, just wait for it to list all the directories, go inside your ping pong folder. And now you have this buildozer.spec file. So what you can do is you can just drag this inside your computer or where you created this main.py or pong.kv files and change the app name to something else if you want. But right now just kind of follow along, just let the name uh, whatever it is. So now we have created our um, buildozer.init and buildozer.spec file. So we are just gonna write ls and see whether the file has been created in our server or not. So you can see it has been created. So now we need to do the next step that is buildozer minus v and our debug and this will actually create your apk file. And this step will actually, if you are doing it for the first time, this will take the most amount of time. So just paste it over here and press enter and just press y. All right, so now it's gonna install all this crazy stuff, Python for Android, and this will also install Android NDK and SDK, which is required to convert a file into an APK. So while running it, it might give you an error. So after installing it, it will kind of give you an error. So what I want you to do is make sure you don't stop the installation, let it complete and give you an error because in the process, it will install a couple of things that we will need. But the problem was that we didn't install Cython properly. So what we are gonna do is we are just gonna write pip freeze and dash dash local. So this is basically to realize what kind of libraries are installed on your system or your server. So I'm just gonna write pip freeze dash dash local and this will give us a list of all the libraries that are installed inside our server so you can see there is no list and this list there is no cython so what we have done is when we were installing cython over here so let's go to our where we were installing cython over here we are installing python so what happens when we install with dash dash user because we are already inside a root so that's why when we write dash dash user, Cython is not installed properly. So what we are gonna do is, we're just gonna come over here and we are gonna install Cython again. So I'm just gonna write pip install Cython and press enter. So this will install Cython for us this time properly. And now just run it again, the Android debug command. So now this one won't take that much time because we have already installed Android JDK and SDK, all the other things that were required in the previous one. So now this won't take that much time. And now just we are gonna run it again and hopefully this time it will give us what we need. Press enter and we're gonna press Y and it says uh, no build doses dot spec found. So you have to make sure that you're installed inside the ping pong directory. So we are gonna go inside our pong directory and now we are gonna run the command again. Now inside this, let's actually type in ls again so that we are sure whether the buildozer.spec file is here or not, it's here. So we can now run our uh, command of Android again and press enter. And this time it should work properly and not give us any errors, hopefully. So let's wait for it to complete again. All right, by now the installation must be complete and your Android packaging is done and the APK has been created. So to download that APK, you have to open up your FileZilla or if you're using Linux or Mac, you have to go to a folder inside this. So this folder is basically called uh, bin. So inside this bin, there's this .apk file, which you need to store it inside your mobile phone. But if you are using Windows, just open up FileZilla and we need to refresh it so that we can get the new directories and inside this bin folder there is uh, this apk file and this apk file you have to transfer it to your computer so i'm just going to transfer it to my desktop and then it will take a little bit of time because the size is 12 mb so it's going to take some time so after this has been downloaded on your desktop you need to copy this file so if i go to my desktop right now uh, you can see there's this apk file over here my app so i'm just gonna change the name to something else let's just call it pong um, pong let's call it pong debug.apk and now we need to copy this file to our mobile phone it doesn't matter how you copy it to your mobile phone because this needs to be installed you can like send it through gmail or upload it on dropbox and then download it on your mobile phone or you can just copy it into your memory directly like bluetooth whatever you want so now I'm just gonna copy this from here and paste it inside my mobile phone. So right now I've just connected it with my wire to my mobile phone and I'm gonna open it up inside my storage. And uh, I've already created a folder over here called Pong Game. I'm just gonna paste it over here. Now I'm just gonna open up my mobile phone, go to my file manager and then internal storage and look for the place where we have stored the APK file, which is inside this Pong Game folder. And 
I'm just going to install the APK file and it's going to be installed and you can see that our game is working after the Kiwi launcher our game works and we can move our paddle using our touch. Alright guys so this is pretty much it for this video in this video we learned how to convert our Kiwi app into a game on your mobile phone or Android and you can similarly convert your desktop app to an Android app it doesn't have to be a game and this is pretty much it for this video guys so in the next video we'll be starting our next app of Kiwi so I'll see you over there.